Every major news story is with many perspectives and layered with different levels of impact. Hello. What time did this happen? We will be right there. At TV's News, we follow the big and major news, gathering the facts, witnessing the outcome. I am here live for the aftermath of the approval of the new national minimum wage. We are TV station of the year, not just for breaking news, but for being first, fair and accurate. TVC News, first with breaking news. At TVC News, wherever the big news story is happening, we're geared up to break it. TVC News, first with breaking news. Sometimes, it's the story that calls. At other times, the people just want to be heard. Schooler, I need student, but I need teacher. Can't continue like this. Their voices were echoing through time itself. We haven't done anything. If the, the tide is high, everybody run for safety. Their tears leave a sweet, sour taste for all. Their demands, a familiar call beckoning for change. In our world, no one expects a disaster to happen. But when it does, we'll be there to x-ray all sides. Hello and thank you for joining the Monday edition of Journalist Hangout. I am Esther Mokariola. Today on the program, President Tinubu tells foreign investors to report any of his officials who demands bribe. And later on the show, NLC insists only implementation of agreement with the federal government will stop nationwide strike. Well, let me quickly, let me quickly welcome our guest, Gani Kayode Balogun, who has returned two months after he's been away from the program. Journalist Anger, good to have you back here good with us. Back. <laughs> no place like home. Welcome back. It's indeed no place like home. And as well, I'll be hanging out with Babajide Kolade Otitoju. Journalist Hangout starts now. Well, before we begin, let's share some messages from fans of Journalist Hangout in the United States who met with GKB while he was on a holiday in America. GKB, GKB reporting from Chicago, Illinois. I have with me here our biggest fan in the Americas. Biggest fan. The biggest fan. <laughs> if I see something, Everybody, all the all the all the journalists and girls crew, all the journalists hang out crew. We watch you every day, every day. Thank you for keeping us updated on all the things going on back home. We appreciate you and everything that you're doing. Merry Christmas, and we really are grateful. Yeah. So y'all say, get on this and get Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, GKB. Merry Christmas, g -day. Merry Christmas, Ayo. We love you all. We love you too. <laughs> Hello, good afternoon. This is GKB in Chicago. Oh, with yeah. my host, the Big T, <laughs> Dr. Tony Azomaya. Only you. This is for the Rotaractors in the 80s. For so you to know we are here and fine. Everything is fine. Good. I'm looking good. I'm looking the part, as you can see. Everything is working well. The, the boys in town. <laughs> There's nothing else you can say. But to say thank you, Chicago. And I'll be back next week. God uh, willing. Uh, yeah. Have a wonderful day. This is GKB, and this is my tank cover. GKB don't collect give to, don't collect give to. The progressives of Indiana, they don't do for us. They don't do for me, oh. They don't do for us. 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 Nigeria has been seeing this one before. Ah, the night nap top, the other one. You see how before? Nasu, Nasu, you see how mo? You see how? You see how mo? Ah, you see? Nasu, serious one. Serious job, oh. Serious one. Now let's be forget about Nigeria. Nasu, we are the president.
GKB must have had fun, I can tell from the videos that you just shared with us. Yeah, it was, it was a beautiful experience. Wow. And we, had, we had a lot of fun all over the world. Mm. So I'm usually very overwhelmed whenever I get to the US, especially the business area, Chicago, Atlanta, and Indiana. A lot of people were even aware I was coming because oh, wow. it was announced on the program mm. that I'd be here for two months. Then they were throwing passes left, right, and center. I've been insisting on talking to Jude, but the problem is that by the time they are talking to me, it will be 2 a.m. in Nigeria, and no, no, no person of this earth will talk to Jude at 2 a.m. Uh, I'll be in dreamland at that time. So a lot of people will just stop me on the road and say, hey, GKB, yeah, GKB, yeah, GKB, yeah, can I talk to him? I said, I know we'll not pick it. I'll just pick it for. Can I talk to him? After I'm for a minute, you know, I said, it's 2 a.m. No, they've not dropped the voice note, so that's why we have digital. Uh, we lot, but we just wanted to hear his voice. I wanted to confirm that I was not the fake GKB. <laughs> All right, I think I have, you have a challenge with your microphone. Let's let me guess. Two okay. months, I mean, 12 minutes. Okay. So we had to just play about three minutes or so. Yeah. So we have fans everywhere, mm. everywhere. There is no part of the world where we do not have fans, either in China, everywhere. Mm. Uh, the, the program, to me, is much bigger than we even imagine it to be. Whether it's in the UK, when Mayor traveled to the UK, he said from Heathrow, from Heathrow people were dragging him and saying, ah, we know you, you know, journalists, and from Heathrow, before we, we got onto the tube, they were, so, and some of them were saying, look, we would like to host you, we would no, like to. they hosted me. <coughs> well, the Heathrow story, mm. they hosted me five years ago, the custodian staff, they called each other. Those who are, they just heard my voice. And they said, that, that was GKB's voice. Mm -hmm. They now took me and my children out of the aircraft to a place called the uh, East Station, I think. So in Chinese food. They paid. They even took, gave us takeaway because we have a layover over three hours. They said, take it along. And thank you, then, and we thank you. <laughs> so we thank God. Hours, yeah. We thank God uh, that our efforts are not in vain. Mm. What we've been doing for almost 10 years now, people appreciate. Indeed. You get some insults along the way. <laughs> but it's all part of life. Actually. It's, it's part of life and yeah. it's refreshing to know that the majority mm. of our people appreciate what we do, our commitment to the truth, the truth, the fact that we stand by the people, whatever the situation, and we, we shall not change. God uh, being on our side, we won't change. All right, let's quickly move on to our focus of discussion. Let's begin with the issue of failing standard of education in Nigeria. Mass failure of students in West African Examinations Council, WIEC, and other national examinations has been attributed to social media, which encourages wrong spelling by students. The National Coordinator of Achievers Spelling Bee, Noel Dauda, said the majority of Nigerians attached themselves to social media where words are deviated and such are applied in examinations. Ike, when I first saw this story, I was beginning to ask, how possible is it? Because we know, I know I've heard of shorthand, you know, for people to write, make it easy to communicate. So how can this be transferred into writing in examination halls? I mean, students would have been briefed before that moment that you should write and write clearly so. Well, um, your invigilator won't be telling you mm what to write and how to write. Mm -hmm. um, your teachers, uh, the level of your school will have taken care of that. But you know, in English language, there is you know, elementary English language, there is something called mechanical accuracy. And um, it's very important. Mm -hmm. You know, when you are writing an essay, you have to take cognizance of mechanical accuracy. Every spelling error, you lose marks. You know, where you are supposed to use punctuation, if you do not use punctuation, you lose marks. Where you do not spell accurately, you lose marks. So, in today's world, these children simply, they, they've um, coined their own words, and they found a way to spell words by actually abridging mm. the, the real spelling of the word. 
it's like they are in so much of a hurry. Their attention span is very short. If you write, write something long and you give them to read, they have no time. They will just read up to a point and stop. I remember <laughs> conducting a training here at TVC. Mm. I was standing for almost four hours during that training. And some of the staff were telling me, uh, please, uh, uh, is there an electronic version of the the training, uh, these uh, training notes that I came up with? I said, no. There is no electronic version. And you must, you must write yeah. everything that I'm saying. As I was dictating, I told them to be writing. It was a nightmarish experience for them because I knew that if I provided the electronic version, mm -hmm. they would not concentrate fully. And we are talking about errors that we see on a daily basis. They are, we Nigerians have carved out our own version of the English language. The Nigerianization of the English language is getting worse with every passing day. So some of those errors, you won't even know that they are errors. You, you imagine, oh, this is correct, you know? That was what I was teaching. Mm. So you wanted me to give you the electronic version so that uh, you can refuse to pay attention to what we were saying. I said, no. Well, what, what were you you must to... have lecture notes. Yes. They all had their lecture notes. In fact, mm. there's a correspondent who tells me that from time to time, to you revise it. it. Mm. The lecture, they, in their own hand, they came with their exercise books. And that, in my view, was the best thing to do because that was the way I was trained. We didn't have internet during our time, you know? Mm. The internet has revolutionized our world, but it has also made people lazy. Even journalists, people just rush, go to Google, you go and pick something. And it's not everything that you find on the internet that is correct or is accurate. We've seen situations when people lifted a story written by another person, somebody's hard work, and dumped it on his own page, changed the intro, changed the conclusion, and put his name. A famous newspaper in our country was guilty of that. Mm. He just changed the intro, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. the, and, the, and the person gave himself credit. Byline. So, but for the young people, it's not even the problem of spelling that is, that, that is of concern to me. Mm. It is the fact that Young people now suffer sleep disorder because it is at the time when they're supposed to be resting their heads that they are on social media or playing some games on their phones. So the time that children give to studying has diminished over time right. because they, 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 they become so attached, you know, the, the, the social media is addictive. Yeah. I was telling my son, I, I got into his room at 2 a.m. I saw him, he was playing um, a game on his phone. I said, look, when did you start to behave like this? This thing is addictive. If you do not get rid of the, uh, it at this point, mm -hmm. it will affect you academically. Mm -hmm. What I usually do is, like two weeks to the exam, you I'll relieve him of his phone. That's my last one. Mm -hmm. I'll relieve him of his phone lock it up, you know? Mm. There are tablets, I will take their mm -hmm. tablets from them. In fact, mm -hmm. unfortunately, when the N South people came and said, oh, our office are blessed, <laughs> the tablet, tablet was, was raised. Gone inside my office. Because <laughs> I had to keep it. Mm. If I didn't do that, because I noticed that when I traveled and my wife didn't take it, mm. I take my, my, my children did badly in their exams. So this social media thing is, um, I mean, is something that we have to we have to strike a balance. Indeed. Yes. And in striking a balance, GKB, how can this be done, particularly for a world which is fastly advancing? Because we cannot stop our world from you know advancing to the stage it is moving. So how can we balance you know ensuring that our children, our wards have good education <coughs> while also keeping up with the trends in terms of uh, technology and, and all of that? Well, I know of some schools mm. that do not allow their students access to phones. 
especially when it's a month or two weeks to the exam. Now, there are boarding schools that don't even allow it at all. You can only call the house mistress or the house master to talk to them. And they have access to talk to you for one minute only. You will tell them, right away, I want to talk to your father. One minute, I'll take the phone away from you. Of course, that, that, all, that, all that can be flushed away when they come home for three months. And they have unlimited access to their tablets and their phones. And the addition to games, to me, is, is, it has advantages if you can be controlled because it teaches you alertness. But my fear is the fact that they are not, mov they are not moving from games to more harmful sites. Mm. Young children are now going to porn sites. They are now going to betting sites. Things that normally, when we are their age, we don't even know what All they are things are. And you'll be surprised that they know. But the main danger is the fact that the language is now so saturated with curse words that they've taken as second nature. And by the time you ask them, where did you get that? Where did you hear that? They said, somebody said it in my class. And what did your teacher say? Uh, they, they said it behind the teacher. And most of that, they are making mockery of the teacher. Is that bad? And all this is based on access to social media. And that to me is the danger because normally logic is number one when it comes to English language. Right. You, mo you must make sense. Mm. You must introduce. You must do the body of the work. You must conclude. And that will guide you throughout life. Whether you become a journalist or a doctor or whatever you become. You must follow the sequence of organization. Now they don't do that anymore. That's why when you see them as adults on social media and they argue, you wonder, did you read... No, they, they Did you read what they you are reacting to? Mm -hmm. I won't read the post that they will be commenting. And then you wonder, well, you didn't go to school. Why not thought that to follow this pattern? But they are the noisiest of the people on social media. They tell you what to do. They tell you what father, your father has done. And sometimes you have to reply to them and tell them what their father was never going to become. <laughs> well, let's quickly hope that this matter is addressed before it gets out of hand. Well, now a showdown is looming between university workers and the federal government over withheld salaries. And the Joint Action Committee of the Non-Academic Staff Union of Educational and Associated Institutions, NASU, and the Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities, SANU, has issued a one-week ultimatum to the federal government to pay the withheld salaries of members or risk an industrial action. In a statement jointly signed by the General Secretary of NASU, Kitas Adeyemi, and the President of SANU, Mohammed Ibrahim, the unions warned that they shouldn't be held responsible if university administration is grounded to a halt following the failure of the government to comply with the ultimatum. Well, let's hear from the leadership of the unions. Quite absurd, quite unfortunate. And um, to fast forward to the transition that brought in this government, the engagements continued. And the President uh, Bola Tinibu government, in his own wisdom, you know, decided to grant a waiver for the payment of four months of the withheld salaries. And uh, you could remember also that was in October 2023. And um, the special advisor to the president on uh, public affairs or media, uh, Ajuri Ngelali, in his release, did mention that, uh, that the waiver was for the payment of four months with health salary of workers in the universities. That is, all workers in ASU, in SANU, NASU, and NAT. And um, fast forward to today, we realize that only members for our colleagues who are in the academics, as members of ASU, who are the ones that got the payment of four months out of their eight months. And uh, upon inquiry, we realized that the memo that was written by the chief of staff to the minister of finance and subsequently uh, the approval to the accountant general uh, had only members of ASU contained therein. So we were taken aback as to what happened to the uh, president's approval. And um, this is giving a lot of concern. Here we are working in the same environment. We went on the same strike. 
you know, on our issues, and we struck a deal and signed an agreement. And the president of the country granted a waiver to pay the money. And then members of NASU and SANU were kept at bay. So we reached out to the Minister of Education, and uh, he did assure us that the approval of Mr. President was for all workers in the public universities, especially the ones in the uh, federal universities, as this, as this case is concerned. So um, two weeks down the line, we, have, we are yet to receive you know, payments for the withheld salary. So this is something that has given a lot of concern, and our members are restive. You can understand that uh, it's just like a family of uh, a father, mother, and children. And then you, the father and mother you know, maltreat other children, and then also just you know, uh, brings out one to give uh, the, uh, the child a special treatment. So we decided in our wisdom, because ours is that which is so uh, um, humane, we are majorly populated by professionals. In Sanu and Nasu, we have accountants, we have engineers, we have administrators, doctors, planners, you know, architects, name it. We do everything in the university outside teaching. So uh, ours is to draw the attention of the public and also reach out to those that matter, to intervene in this matter, because our patience is clearly running out and uh, we are meeting uh, within the next uh, seven days to take a final decision. But uh, we said that we should reach out to the world so that at the end of the day, nobody will blame us to say that we just decided to down tools. But clearly, with the current economic situation in the country, with the way things The president of Sanu, Mohammed Ibrahim, speaking there. But Ikeo, this story, you know, that she revealed is can be quite troubling when the two bodies have agreed, you know, a waiver will be granted and all of a sudden only one person was granted, another body was not granted. What do you think of what happened, you know? I want to believe that uh, this, um, there was a mix-up somewhere because the president didn't say pay us we alone. Mm. And uh, if you are to look at the issue dispassionately, Asu was at the forefront of the struggle, and Asu was um, paid, and you didn't pay, because when um, university teachers go on strike, the whole school, the it's school grounded. is shut. Yeah. Because what is the point? You exist for the students. Mm -hmm. The students are not going to receive lectures, the school will be shut. Meaning that these um, uh, administrative workers and the rest of them, they will um, also not be paid. So they were not paid during that period. Mm. So you can't then go and pay as we alone. I read what uh, Konoa and others were saying. Konoa was saying, look, our, our own members did not go on strike. So you are not supposed to even owe us. You are supposed to pay us everything. But the government must have said to us, um, this is a faction of the academic staff. Mm -hmm. But when um, they decided to go on strike, the whole school was shut. I'm not saying that's their reason, but they must have reasoned that, look, all of you are university lecturers. You didn't work during that period. There were lecturers who also complained that, look, even during the strike, we were doing community work. Some of us were supervising um, Project. uh, projects, um, <coughs> PAGTCs mm -hmm. and the rest of them. So that it wasn't like they, they did they not work at down, all. Yeah. Of course, that argument was uh, uh, shut down. I want to believe that this is um, a mix-up somewhere. And since they had written to the chief of staff, to the president, mm. on their exclusion, I expect the chief of staff to take the right steps, go back to the president to say, look, we made a mistake somewhere in 
the payment. The payment should have accommodated everybody. Everybody. Mm. You know, four months out of eight months, mm. uh, the president uh, grac uh, graciously approved. approved. So let everybody be paid. Absolutely. That's, that's, that's the, in the interest of justice. Let everybody be paid. Nasu, they are also, uh, uh, you don't run a university with um, academic staff yeah. alone. Mm. They are as important. As, as the rest stuff. of them, Absolutely. Uh, you know, so. GKB, your position on this matter? Well, the reality is that there must have been a mix-up somewhere. Because I don't think anybody in their right mind will go out of their way to cut off the non-academic staff. <coughs> join. Remember, they are not asking for bonuses mm -hmm. or waivers. They're asking for their salaries that were affected by the strike. And like Gideon said, they are on strike by default. Because once there are no students to teach, there's no basis to keep the university open. So even if they are willing to work, there's really nobody to service. No students in the hostel to maintain generators for, or to run water for. And there are no grasses to be caught because there's nobody to use the facilities. So I think whoever made this error has not done the president or the administration any favors. Mm. Like the man said, the president made a promise. This was confirmed by the Minister of Education. That meant that at the point in time, those who are supposed to draw a line have done that. Somebody down the line must have decided these people are more important than these people. And that can be damaging to the morale of these workers. Because whether we like it or not, as the Yorubas will say, if you think this finger is useless, let somebody cut it and put pepper there. But I will be able to sleep. <laughs> so because you, you look at it and say, I don't use it for anything. It's very insignificant. Yeah. But let somebody, or you get a condo, and then when you can't sleep for days, you realize that the finger is also <laughs> Because important. if these people should switch off water lights and refuse to cut the grass and all that, the university will start smelling under three, four days. Mm. So whoever is doing this is not doing the presidency any favors. Absolutely. And it must be rectified as quickly as possible. Are they not even the security? People are yeah. Potters and the rest of them. Yeah. They're not uh, non-academic. Yeah, mm. everybody. You, Engineers. You can't use the library. You, can, yeah. you mm. know, so... Uh, yeah, it's it, important it as the no academic sense. staff. Yeah. It makes no sense to do... To be excluded. Uh, ...what they have done. Mm. I, I sincerely believe that this was an error. Mm. Um, and, um, of course, it can be redressed. How quickly, too. Redressed and uh, we'll, we'll appeal to the president uh, to... <coughs> do uh, to quickly respond to uh, the plea of these guys. We yeah. don't want them to go on strike. Indeed, because it's like they say, when two elephants fight, the grass suffers, and the grass in this case are the students. Well, let's quickly go on a very quick break. You're still on to journalist Tanga. We'll have more discussions in just a moment. Stay with us. Every second, every minute, every hour, and every day, time doesn't just tick away. It's a countdown to political decisions that shape our world. This country must move in. Imagine the impact these decisions have on our lives. Some are consequential, others may leave us intrigued or baffled. You will have no better friend and partner than a year. Step in and feel the frenzy like never before. Join me every weekday for an hour of fact-finding interviews where questions cut to the core. What does Tinubu have that other 17 candidates do not have? I will dig in to get to the heart of issues, from local politics to global insight. Join me as I unearth the power plays, jaw-dropping revelations and the unfiltered truth. This isn't just politics, it's unraveling the stories that matter. Brace yourself for politics tonight, every weekday at 8 p.m., where every decision echoes along the corridors of our lives. Politics tonight, only on CBC News. Now, to ensure free flow of the needed foreign direct investments to Nigeria, 
the federal government must remove all perceived impediments. And in this regard, President Bola Tinubu has asked captains of industry in Qatar to report any Nigerian official who demands bribe before allowing them to do business in the country. And President Tinubu insisted that Nigeria will no longer be held back by bureaucratic bottlenecks and corruption that stifled the ease of doing business. PK, I'll come to you on this. First off, let me get your perspective on the president's statements to Qatari investors. Let's have your perspective on this first, because there have been so many divergent views with regards to what he said. This um, is a well-known fact that we have a big problem with corruption. Public servants don't want to do anything for free. without their palms being greased. There are investors who have been frustrated, not just by bureaucratic bottlenecks in our country, but by the fact that they are bringing money into the country to invest in the country. Yet, some public servants will insist on being bribed. And these are usually highly placed people. Highly placed people uh, in position to make good things happen. They would demand for bribe. And in the past, some of such um, uh, investors have left our country in anger because they can't understand why anybody will ask them for bribe when, in actual fact, we should be happy and excited to receive foreign uh, portfolio investment and, uh, and uh, uh, foreign capital inflows. Because we're talking about our currency now being weak. It is because of dollar illiquidity. We don't have enough dollars because we are not earning enough, enough by way of exports and all that. But if foreign capital inflows come into our country, if foreign capital comes into our country, it will improve liquidity. The um, CBN governor was saying the other day that they've received um, foreign capital inflows to the tune of about $2 billion. Mm. All of this will help. If business is foreign, investors come in to invest in enterprises in Nigeria. Critical yeah, systems. I understand the perspective. Like MTN, for example, I right. give the example of MTN. Right. You know the difference that MTN has made here. Mm -hmm. In terms of paying its taxes, is one of the biggest in our country in terms of what they pay to us as a country by way of taxation, mm -hmm. you know, by way of even employment of people, by way of capital injection. So we, you need those investors to come in. And that's why the president has been going around mm -hmm. and he has made gains in terms of promises. In Mero, we are coming, we are going to invest to the tune of uh, 30 uh, billion dollars, this and that. Investing in the power sector, investing in the health sector, investing in diverse Telecom. sectors. All right. So we need them because it will help to boost our economy. Yeah, in as much as we need these foreign investors, some have argued that this statement enough that he made in such a gathering, it's more like the market in the country because he's market. an ambassador he's telling, of no, Nigeria, no, no, no. That, so he is, should represent. I disagree. Okay. I disagree. Right. Why? I disagree because many of them don't even want to talk about Nigeria because of this kind of irresponsible behavior by public servants who would rather demand for bribe and anger people who want to come and invest and make your country better. So he knows that that problem is there. President Tinubu doesn't deceive himself. Mm. He's a different kind of person. And it's not uh, at all times you expect him to be politically correct. He knows that we have that issue. He knows that many investors don't want to touch Nigeria with a long pole because of issues like this. And if in the past we had not addressed that problem, we had not punished the 
okay. unscrupulous individuals who are the marketing. They are actually the ones marketing the country. Because no one wants to come and do business in a place where they will be asking you for bribes, they will be asking you for this, asking for that, frustrating you. You are bringing business and people are out to frustrate you. But you the think... president knows that that is a problem. Right. He knows that in their hearts, mm -hmm. a lot of them are made up their minds never to come mm -hmm. because of issues like that. So he's gone to say, look, he has not come to say, ah, my country is reputed for this. He's saying if anybody, if is the active word, Caveat. before people criticize, they have to analyze uh, speeches properly. That is what our people don't, don't, don't do. He said, if anybody, mm -hmm. it's a conditional statement. Mm -hmm. What is the marketing? He said, if anybody, if any of my aides ask you for bribe, report. How is that wrong? But do you think the how, is that, how is that the market? No, even let me ask even you. Right. You are saying, if, mm -hmm. if someone, it says, if anybody among my aides asks you for bribe, report. So that you can see the way we will deal decisively with that person. Now, those unscrupulous people be, I mean, uh, uh, making life difficult for us. They've already had. They know that this president will not tolerate such a thing. They know that if those people report, the president will come for them. They know now. Let's, it's not every time that we just we scratch issues on the surface, we will not want to address the problems confronting us as a people. I'm very happy that he said this, because I've seen that somebody granted uh, uh, an interview where he was talking about billions of dollars in investment that people were bringing. Mm. And they kept asking for bribe. They will make it difficult for you until you part with the money. And if you're angry, you, you fail to part with the money, you then leave. Who has lost? It's my country. Yeah. So it's not the marketing. He's saying that if, he did not say, ah, I know that you have had that in my country. Ah, this is what we do. Ah, if he said so, you say the, the marketer. Do these people even, do they even try to understand the spoken word before criticizing? Ah, because I don't understand. He said, if anybody does that, report the person. Mm. Honestly, they will know now that if that had been happening in the past, it's not, it doesn't have official backing. And this president will not back any of his aides to, uh, to uh, take money from people by way of bribes, people who don't want to come and invest in our country. Right. GKB, let me get your perspective on this matter because although uh, from the perspective I was getting, they were like, which investor would want to report to the president when you have corruption case or maybe allegation? Would you want to meet the president who has now bring up himself to say, okay, report to me if you have any scenarios like this? Do you think an investor will be really willing and ready to do that? Because well, already, already sending a signal that uh, well, all is not well in your no, home. No, 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 I don't oh, think that's, 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 he never, that's never not, said that. Doesn't say, doesn't mean that all is <laughs> that, not. That's not what he said. Uh -huh. What he's saying is uh, basically this. That he knows, mm. like we all do, that there will be name droppers. The man who wants to make the money will tell you the investor that he's giving you another from the very top. The man is not saying, if they drop my name as the clinger for that deal, mm. call me. Because that's what they will do. They will drop name of ministers, they will drop name of those who are close to the president. Because we are talking about investors who are bringing in millions of dollars. So they will have moved beyond certain points maybe up to the level of directors or peers. Mm. And at that point in time, the thing is almost done. So maybe one or two signatures to go. That's when they use that particular strategy, that you have to drop something. And it's not for me. It's all that from the top. So what the president is saying essentially is what the Yoruba, I don't, I don't know how to say it in English, but there's a Yoruba saying that says that a man who slaps his own blood brother is sending a message to his stepbrothers that don't dare me. Don't try it. Because he has slapped his own blood brother. So the stepbrothers will be wary. So what the president is saying is clear. I know some people here, or some people out there, eventually will get to you. I will drop my name. Or drop the name of those who are close to me. Report them. So that game is now off the table. So whoever, whoever is planning to do that can no longer do that. Because if now said that, hey, Mr. Investor, you have to give me X, Y, Z. I said, why should I do that? Yeah, because it's done from the top. The investor cannot pick his phone, measure the name of the person, 
and then report to the president. This, of course, will not there take... Are, there are various means by which you can reach yeah. the president. You don't have to even call him. There are, there are things you can do. You have to get to a point that the president himself is aware that this will not totally eliminate corruption. You have lost mm. a lot of opportunities yeah. because of the activities of these people. But this will serve as a notice. There is a friend of mine who, who, who is a key um, appointee of the Lagos governor. Mm. I know what he told me. Somebody wanted to um, come and do business here. It was someone high up in government. Very high. You know, you know the, the, the demand he made was that they, they should give him equity. In the, in the business. Yes. <laughs> they were giving me, okay, what, what uh, uh, shares are you giving me? That he should now be co-owner of the business because you are trying to facilitate, ma make it business, easy for yeah. them to do business. These are irresponsible people. There are so many people in this country whose business is simply to line their pockets. Yeah. They don't care whether the rest of us, whether the com country uh, uh, goes to blazes. All they're after is how they can steal from the com uh, country. And we've gone past that stage now. And the president is saying he will deal decisively with entrenched interests mm. who are trying to frustrate investors from coming into the country. And he said something again, which the CBN governor has been doing. He said, you will be able to move your money Let's in and it. out Let's of our country. Mm -hmm. Why do you think Emirates and the rest of them have refused to come back to Nigeria? Because we are owing them. They've not been able to repatriate their funds. You come to do business in their country, and they are owing you. As we speak, $2.2 billion, we are owing airlines. The CBN governor has been paying. It's right now, they've paid more than $2 billion of those uh, debts. And th last week, they still pay $400 million. And they are saying, as they are paying, they are saying, no. Under this administration, you will be able to move your funds. Flawlessly. Those problems will not be there. That is why those investments, totaling $2 billion, came in. Within a short time, the investor confidence is better because they can see now that uh, a, a government that is paying these funds that we are being owed, paying rapidly, showing urgency to pay, by the time we come here to do business, modalities will be in place for them to ensure that they do not owe us at all. So the president also added that, look, we will... Make sure that you are able to move your funds. Right. Nobody wants to go to a country where his funds will be trapped. Yeah. If you are a business person. You are not Father Christmas. You, are no, you can't be happy. Mm -hmm. You've worked hard, you've toiled, and you cannot move your funds. Mm. Nigerian uh, businessmen, people like Dangote and the rest of them. Dangote is in uh, uh, more than 10 countries in Africa doing the cement business. How will he feel if he cannot repatriate his, his funds, funds into this? What was the essence of the hard work? So that is the thing. There are many things that need to change. Right. This corruption, corruption is one of the things that the West especially, they don't want to hear about it. If they know you don't respect human rights, if they know there's endemic corruption in your country, they don't want to come and invest in your country. And that's why the president addressed that issue. He knows that in their hearts, they've had those stories. Mm. And they say, if anyone... If anyone, if it's the active word, if anyone the demands for bribe just for you to come and invest in our they, country, they are doing us a favor. If anyone demands for bribe, let them. me know that person. Mm -hmm. And there are channels by which you can reach the president. For me now, I may not talk to the president directly, but there are channels by which, to which I can reach him. him. And I will be aware that he has had me. So that is the thing. The investors know now that this, this is not of, this, that level of corruption is not official. Right. Nature. Right. It's just individuals, you know, trying to make money. Exploiting, now, exploiting the system. don't see it as if it's been institutionalized in our country. No. It's just some black legs, some bad eggs, some good for nothing Nigerians who are trying to undermine our country with their greed. All right, let's quickly move on to our next issue of discussion, where for the organized labor in Nigeria, it's no retreat, no surrender in its struggle for improved living conditions of workers. The Nigerian Labour Congress has insisted that the only thing that would stop the planned nationwide strike over 
economic hardship in the country is the implementation of the agreements reached by both parties. And in the latest letter to the federal government, the NLC dismissed claims by the government officials that it has fulfilled 80% of the October, 20, October 2nd, 2023 agreement with the organized labor. Well, we have uh, to discuss this matter quickly with a GKB before we end this program. Because, you know, when we look at this issue of GKB, it seems as though there is a part, there's a question of... Um, sincerity on the part of the government, on both parties, let me yeah. put it on the, and that, and that aspect. But what's your take about this issue and how can it be quickly resolved? Because we've had protests not too far, not too far away, just some days ago. Well, the resolution is, of course, if both parties agree mm. on where we are right now. Because the government is saying they've done 80%, Labour is saying they've done less than that. But Labour have not told us the percentage they've done that will warrant them going back to do this. Because mm. in any negotiation, there will be timelines and there will be parameters that are set. So Labour has not been able to tell us what, the, what are the timelines set to meet these demands and where government has defaulted. Don't forget that the leadership of NLC has created an impression of being antagonistic to this administration which may be well and good for whatever they want to achieve. But ultimately, they will lose the most potent weapon in the arsenal. By always coming up with these threats whenever things like this happen. Because there must be timelines that either party must meet. And they must have defaulted over time for me to say this. Because when I read the release, I was waiting for them to explain to me that, okay, the October agreement is this. Mm. This is the timeline. By December, they ought to have done this. By March, they have to have done this. This is what they've done. This is not what they have done. And then you don't now use the threat of a strike, essentially, as a tool. Because it's a tool that will soon be, will no longer be as sharp. So what should they have adopted? Two things. Let them keep meeting with the government. And if they have proof that the government has not met the timelines, let them do what they do best. Give a warning, then go back to their base and let them know how far this thing has gone? Mm. What else? Let's leave the status quo. No, they continue. BK, BK, your thoughts on this? Uh, the, I was looking, there are indeed some of those agreements that have not been met. Right. Um, let me read some of them. Non implementation, uh, okay. Review the program of cash transfer and Propose the inclusion of low income earners in the program. Government has not uh, fully implemented that. implemented that. They have reviewed the program. It was Wale um, Edun that was given the mandate. He has submitted his report. Now, what Labour, the only thing that Labour has asked for here is include low income earners. It means that. The government will have to spend a lot more by the mm. time you include low income earners. Who are the people they are talking about? Maybe from grade level one to seven. Depends, it depends on who they see as a low income earner. As far as the government is concerned, the, pro, the, the uh, conditional cash transfer is not designed for that category of people. Mm. It's not even des uh, designed for civil servants. Salary, yeah. It's not designed for civil servants, you know? So. They've not met that, and I can understand why. Tax waivers for workers, small businesses, and the general public. I don't know whether government that is struggling with revenue, uh, with yeah. revenue would agree to tax, to, to tax waivers for workers. And you said general public. What do you mean by general public? Hmm. General public. That one is even, it's it's not, not even it's not good enough. to say general public. It's public. Public is public. <laughs> you know? So who are you talking about? Outstanding wages, uh, salaries for tertiary education workers in all federally owned education institutions to be paid. I know that they started doing that. They paid four months out of eight months. Mm. The, every time the ASU goes on strike, 
or threatening very to long strike. strike yeah. a long strike. They don't pay at once. They usually pay like two days. That is yeah. the standard. I know. I know that one. You know. So I'm confident that they will pay the remaining four months. States and private sector to be compelled to give wage awards to workers. You can't compel businesses, businesses yeah. and state. You can't compel. I mean, federal government is not sergeant major. Yeah. You can only appeal to them. Yeah. Some states are giving it. Or your is one example, for example. But you can't compare. Look at the word. Labor leaders should choose their words Careful. wisely and carefully. You can't use the word compel. The president is not a military ruler, mm. and you want him to compel. Compel means force. How do you do that in a democracy? Provision of funds for uh, MSMEs across the nation. It makes sense. I would want to see the Minister of Agri uh, do something. Uh, okay, uh, the Minister of Trade do something quickly about that. The fertilizer initiative for farmers across the nation. They are addressing that. From the interview that we had with the Minister of Agri last week, mm. they are doing quite some work in that area. So this is the thing. The issue of the cash award. Mm. I spoke with a, a senior. Uh, my public servant uh, from Abuja just before the program, he said some of them have received four months. The thing kicked off in October. Some have re uh, received four months. Some have not received up to that. What the government needs to straighten out is there should not be selective payment. You shouldn't choose because labor is talking about that. Mm. For example, the TUC have said uh, that they've received up to uh, the end of January. Well, labor is saying no, that is not. So they are not even in agreement on that, on how many people have paid or have been paid. But from what I had, some category of civil servants have re received four months. Right. Some have not. So government has to look at that to address this demand. It's things like the issue of the CNG. You can't roll out CNG buses. Okay. So they have to go and produce them. Mm. They have to produce them. It's just like you want to buy an aircraft. You don't buy an aircraft of, uh, off the shelf. You place an order, and they will give you time timelines. Just like the uh, warplanes that we bought that time. We the knew when Nigeria paid Tukano Tukano for the Tucanos. Mm. And they told us when the first set will come. Yeah. And then when the second set. In fact, they painted them in different colors. They came at different times. So you don't expect the CNG buses and cars Overnight. and um, mm. um, Marwa to have come just like that. No, it, it needs time. It needs time to produce them because we are talking about about 100 billion set aside for it. Mm. That's a lot of money and that, a lot of buses. Course, yeah. So it is it, it, naturally taking some time. Mm. Yes, we want government to move quickly on these matters. But for me, just as he said, I don't think that at every point you must use the strike weapon. If you continue to use it, you get to a point when becomes meaningless. People won't take even your strike seriously anymore. Right. Uh -huh. So, and we don't want labor to be demystified because labor will outlive Ajero or whoever mm. is, is there today. But don't damage labor. Right. Let labor remain effective in fighting for our people. We appreciate that they are fighting for our people, but some of the methods are not good enough. So that they should is, be strategized and yes, think about you know, don't use, don't always be fast. Look at the other. TUC didn't agree to the nationwide protest. Uh, protest right, because yeah. it could have been hijacked. What if it was hijacked and people lost their lives? Mm. What would you say? <laughs> so there should be uh, more tactical in pursuing their demands, their goals. Right. I appreciate them. They are fighting for everyone. Right. Uh, I will not sit here and say no, that I disagree, that they are not fighting for us. If they get something off the table, Across it comes my way. Yeah. I benefit from it. Uh -huh. I benefit from it. Right. So uh, just like if today they say, okay, Mr. President, uh, do this for us, and he does it for the whole country, I will benefit. Right. You cannot take my own benefit away. I will enjoy it too. It's not going to be a zero alone that will enjoy it. But the method, sometimes you have to review your method and ask yourself whether 
It is worth it. It is impossible to meet all these demands. All right. That is a fact. Right. That's where we'll leave it for now for today's episode of Journalist Hangout. Let me thank my guest, my fellow journalist, fellow colleagues with me in the profession, Gani Kayode Balogun. Thank you so much for your insights. Yeah. And Babaji De Koladi Otutoju, thank you so much for your insights on the program as usual. Join us again tomorrow for another episode of it. You can also watch a repeat broadcast of it tonight at 11. Join us again on Sunday from 1.30 to 3.30 p.m. We are also on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash TVC News Nigeria. Many thanks for watching. I'm Esther Mokmariola. Bye for now and God bless Nigeria. Now we are not the hurry go like say something the particular. Oh God, oh, Lord, <laughs> now favor with the sick so. Uh, he did hospital with Mama favor. Uh, favor get uh, diphtheria. And she did. Uh, Maybe you the carrier go take oh, medication. Oh God, Lord, the people. Hey, hey. I've been never given vaccination before. But since we were born favor, never carry and go collect the medication before. Eh? Mama favor now your friend. You know they tell her. I tell him. Even Seth, me and my husband follow you talk that time. You day here when Joy, my sister, gone every time. He they carry him picking for immunization as he supposed. Even Joy follow collecting COVID vaccine that time. Now the head of our Pekins them, we they talk for years. Damn if it. them no collect their immunization eh? as he supposed be, now their head will they put for danger. So, you know go follow Oh, no, no. If your picking needs to collect any immunization, I then go any health center to complete them. Make papa and mama them use that chance to collect them COVID vaccine. Call 7722 for more information. The following is a paid presentation by ShopX TV. Today, there are many complex, boring, expensive, and useless exercise machines in the market. Or you pay over 400,000 naira a year for gym membership and never go. ShopX TV is proud to introduce Total Crunch Evolution, the compact, versatile fitness solution that is perfect for you. With Total Crunch, you get a complete fitness workout in one machine. Say goodbye to ineffective and complicated exercise machines. Now, you have the power to transform your fitness journey and get the body you have always wanted right in the comfort of your own home. Total Crunch is the efficient and effective way to build muscle, tone and tighten your legs, shape your back and pectorals while strengthening your core and defining your abs. Now that's totally effective to get the body you want. With Total Crunch, your whole body works out at the same time. Only Total Crunch can put your whole body in motion as you burn calories and lose weight. Just one fitness routine a week will achieve serious results in four weeks. Total Crunch Evolution has enhanced the way I work out and the results I achieve. It's not just a fitness equipment, it's a life changer. This versatile, time-saving machine is perfect for anyone looking to lose weight or stay in shape. Trust me, this is the game changer you've been waiting for. With my busy schedule, finding time to work out and stay in shape has always been a challenge. Until I discovered the Total Crunch Evolution, it's a lifesaver. Traditional exercise equipment is large, complex, takes up so much space in your home, and you could be paying up to 400,000 Naira for annual gym fees. Get the Total Crunch Evolution, the two-in-one fitness solution to save the cost and transform your body from the convenience of your home. Similar equipment costs 300,000 Naira, but you can get the Total Crunch Evolution for not 300,000 Naira, not even 200,000 Naira. Order right now and get your Total Crunch Evolution for just 179,950 Naira only. And that's not all. You can get our Total Crunch Evolution in two easy payments of 89,975 Naira. That's right. Pay twice to get your Total Crunch. And remember, if you order now, you get the Total Crunch Evolution delivered to you for free anywhere you are in Nigeria. And it comes with a ShopEx 30-day money-back guarantee. Call the number on your screen now or scan the code to place your order now. But hurry, limited stock available. The proceeding is a paid presentation brought to you by ShopEx TV. 
Unfortunately, that was the last we saw Herbert. But I spoke to him January 2024. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas. It shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw ether material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move weigh in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known. For when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking, advocating, protesting as the arts are meant to be. Sometimes, it's the story that calls. At other times, the people just want to be heard. Their voices were echoing through time itself. We haven't done anything. If the, the tide is high, everybody run for safety. Their tears leave a sweet, sour taste for all. Their demands, a familiar call beckoning for change. In our world, no one expects a disaster to happen. But when it does, we'll be there to x-ray all sides, from the east to the west, north and south. Committee Forum will examine the oddities and challenges to economic development, as well as issues yearning for government intervention. Watch fresh episodes of Community Forum on Sundays by 9.30 p.m. only on TVC News. Every week, Green Angle, in partnership with Wild Aid, will bring you a documentary series on environmental issues affecting Nigeria's amazing biodiversity, from climate change, air pollution, and wildlife conservation. We will be traveling across Nigeria to give you on-the-ground report of the issues affecting our environment. It airs every Saturday at 4.30 p.m., only on TVC News. Akiwande Olu Ali was born on 13th July 1934 in Abelkuta, Nigeria to parents Samuel and Grace Shoyinka. His education began with the Christian lessons of his parents as well as the more traditional Yoruba spiritual customs taught to him by his grandfather. He had his preparatory university studies at Government College Ibadan in 1954, subsequently University College Ibadan, and he continued at the University of Leeds, earned a bachelor's degree in English literature, showing his master's degree focused on projects combining his Yoruba culture with traditional British theatre traditions. He later returned to school in Nigeria to study African theatre, during which time he continued to produce poems and plays, one of which appeared on Nigerian television. Shortly after, he became the chief of the Cathedral of Drama at the University of Ibadan. Nigeria had only recently gained independence from Britain and political corruption was at a high. During cast plays and poems became increasingly political and he began giving speeches protesting government corruption. He was accused of conspiring with the Biafra rebels. He was therefore arrested and... Welcome to Beyond 100 Days with Nifemi Ogunto. You can join the conversation right now on X using hashtag Beyond 100 Days. Remember to tag at TVC News NG. So it's a week-long activity for the burial of former Chief Executive Officer of Access Holdings, Dr. Hubert Wigwe, who died in a helicopter crash in the United States. Dr. Wigwe, his wife and son, as well as Abibola Ogubanjo, the former group chairman of Nigerian Exchange Group PLC were in the helicopter when it crashed in California near the Nevada border. And that was on Monday, March 4th. Uh, or rather, uh, the, the lineup of programs is now starting from today, 4th of March 2024, with celebrating Herbert Wigwe, a professional legacy. And then tomorrow, they'll be celebrating Chizo Wigwe and Chizo Ba Wigwe. And on Wednesday, 6th March, it will be a night of tributes. On Thursday, 7th March, there will be a combined service of songs, followed by um, um, a Christian wake on Friday at the Wigwe University in Isokwo. And then finally, on Saturday, a combined funeral service and interment will take place. An outing service will also hold on Sunday, the 10th of March. 
Our correspondent Ayomide Ajegbe is live um, on the island for today's event. He joins me for update um, on the program. Ayomide, um, the night of tribute is featuring quite a number of professional colleagues and friends. What are they saying about the late Wigwe? All right, thank you very much, Ms. Uh, Eddie. Uh, it's been a mixed, uh, mixture of emotions here, uh, as uh, a lot of professional colleagues have been talking about how successful and uh, forward-looking about Igwe was. Um, uh, some people have been talking uh, at the MDC of Access Bank, and also we've had uh, um, some of his classmates when they were in secondary school talking about how he was determined and focused even from secondary school, how he was the great mathematician at the time, and how he got a nickname as a campus general at a young age. Um, there has been a lot of encounters how he learned French at some time in his career because he was having hopes of closing deals with multinational companies across the continent. We have talked so much about how he has been very much instrumental to the growth of Access Bank. You remember the famous merger with Diamond Bank and how he was instrumental in ensuring that the bank became one of the top 15 banks in Africa. And how much of um, dedication he has shown in his career growth to end in the status of uh, the Banker of the Year in Africa, 2020-2021. Um, right now, the governor of uh, Gombe State is here and is also giving a remark of the first-hand experience he has with Herbert and the kind of orientation that he brings to every conversation, which is very difficult to shut it down. Very sad tale, definitely, that has shocked the nation to its uh, very bones. But walk us through what other activities are lined up for the week and how Nigerians can participate in this event. I didn't have a question. Asking the, about the other activities lined up for the week, and how Nigerians can also pay their tribute um, to the late Tigwe, Wigwe. Uh, I'm not sure. I just I had um, what when you said uh, other activities lined up for the week, but I didn't hear the other aspect. But I think um, this is just the first phase of the programs lined up for the week because I think a lot of attention is focused on Abba Tigwe. We are forgetting that uh, the why. The son was also involved in that um, crash, and um, those of programmed together have done a good job in ensuring that we are able to also pay tribute to those people. Um, um, talking about the wife, and then talking about the son also, um, been, uh, uh, trying to get their being because most yeah well. I am Mida Ajay, we're live for us at the hotels of Victoria Island, where an event is ongoing to celebrate professional excellence uh, of Harbour Term Wigwe. Uh, thank you for the update there. Let's now turn to other matters now. Nigeria is ready for serious business. Uh, President Bola Tinubu is saying that um, no doubt his administration will deal decisively with anyone who undermines investor confidence in the Nigerian economy. And that's the message is brought to the international community in Doha, Qatar, as it pledges to remove all bottlenecks standing in the way of profitable and legitimate enterprise in the country. It told Qatari investors Africa's largest economy and its systems are being reformed and upgraded, asking Qatar's captains of industry to report any government official who demands a bribe or any form of inducement at any point in their business. I'm joined now by Chief Economist, SPM Professionals, Paul Alaji, uh, for more 
on this development. Mr. Lajia, thank you for joining us on the program this hour. Before we get back to Mr. Lajia in the course of the show, let's take a short break and we'll be back, everyone. Stay with us. Imagine in Qatar. In Qatar. Dressed. The Inspector General of Police has met with senior officers to review the state of security. We are continuing our coverage of the arrest of Godwin Amephiele. The Senate has summoned the Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria to properly brief the Senate regarding the state of the economy. President Bola Tinubu has announced the total removal of fuel subsidy. The fresh subsidy is gone. What I will never take is threat. Let's now bring you more development from Ibadan, the your state capital, where an explosion has taken place. Tell us about this incident. TVC News. First with breaking news. It's the most visited state in Africa. As the fifth largest economy on the continent, covering Lagos and its government is no mean feat. It's a busy beat. We go beyond the cutting of tapes to traveling far into the deep. I want to thank the Lagos state government for the healthcare facility. To bring stories that cut across all spectrums. A greater Lagos shall be ours. Stories that define our collective well-being as Lagosians. Amadido Jasalam Adini. I live in Lagos, inside Lagos. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas. It shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw earthen material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move way in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known. For when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking, advocating, protesting as the arts are meant to be. Voted as the best TV station of the year. TVC News breaks into the core of every event as they happen. Following all nationwide big and impactful stories. Without the news from every perspective. Covering every human angle. I am Veronica bringing you the news you would want to watch. Small. Do solemnly swear. Chief Economist with SPM, Professionals Paula Ladi, joins me on the program this hour. Thank you for joining us. Reactions already have begun to trail Mr. President's request in Qatar that investors should report any Nigerian official asking for bribe. Um, the President is saying Nigeria is ready to remove all roadblocks to investment. But for Sita Chidoka, former Minister of Aviation, is described it as unfortunate, saying it demarcates Nigeria in the eyes of investors. What do you think? Mr. President's intent was lost on him, right? Hello, good evening. I can hear you clearly, Mr. Laje. Yes, I can hear you now. It wasn't what? clear at first. Oh, great. I was asking you about what you think as regards Mr. President's um, instruction in Doha, asking potential investors to report directly to him 
if any Nigerian official asks for bribe. Um, there are reactions already saying that that statement demarkets Nigeria. I wanted to get your thoughts on that opinion. Well, for me, I wouldn't say it's the market Nigeria. For some of someone like me who have, have been to outside Nigeria to look for investors uh, to come into the country, either as public private partnership together with government or working with another member of private sector. And you would see in one of the interviews I granted in December that went viral regarding possible discouragement that investors have mentioned that they are saying in Nigeria. So I, I think because people might have um, interpreted the statement of the president in two ways to mean that um, the president believes all officials are corrupt. That is why if anyone asks for bribe, you should come. It could also be that the president is saying that we are this transparent. So it's a matter of um, six and half a dozen, how you see it. So some persons will see it like that. And the other set of persons may see it as that is not what he's saying. So it depends on how you look at it. But here is the point. Nigeria outside, you know, outside the, outside Nigeria, we have a huge integrity issue. Or there is, a, there, is, there is a way the rest of the world views Nigeria. Even among African countries, places have been to, including Europe and in Arab that I've seen. When you mention that you're in Nigeria, people come with a lot of concern as to if he's doing projects with us, some officials will ask for 5% of the total investment. Some will ask for 10%. Some will ask for 70% even of the money. So investors all over the world, especially for serious countries such as Qatar, they don't think this is the way to go. And that perhaps is the reason why uh, the, 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 the president might have, might have mentioned that. Mm. I also believe that beyond the statement of the president, it could be good when we make this a policy statement. If we can... Um, creates a program such that when people find out that um, uh, money is being requested for from official, it can be properly reported. Even though you may want to say that is available, but if it's truly available now, the question is, why is it not effective? You might have heard of several places where people would been asked, might have been asked to give some level of keeper, especially people that are coming to invest in Nigeria. I think that may be the reason you know, for the president to have said people should smell the coffee. I hear you clearly. It sounds like perhaps you're saying that corruption appears more endemic as a bottleneck, an obstacle to uh, foreign investments than we seem to appreciate it back at home. But quickly, let me get your thoughts on Mr. President's pledge in that regard to, you know, make a way for profitable and legitimate enterprising is also asked potential investors saying that their funds would find easy mobility in and out of the economy. But what's your own evaluation of, of um, the ease of doing business as of today in such a way that matches the president's enthusiasm in this regard? Well, doing business, uh, Nigeria was rated very poorly the last time, even though it was an improvement from what it was. Among other things, the dream business included um, protection of minority uh, minority shareholder, availability of power, so many things that dream business considered that international organization that is that uh, measured how businesses, um, uh, uh, the performance of businesses when it comes to doing business. Nigeria was really, really, really rated very poorly. Perhaps um, this is one of the things the, the president is looking at to have said, well, if you come to Nigeria, I think the statement spoke directly to FX issues when he says it will have free entry and easy retrieval. Because I must tell you, airlines have stayed in Nigeria for a while. They are finding mm. it very difficult to repatriate their, their funds out of the Nigerian soil. So, you know, this in itself is a disincentive for people to come or other investors to come to Nigeria to come do business. If airline, international airlines are finding it very, very, very difficult to do the same. So... I don't know if there is a new uh, model, which I think is important to be transparent about because the president cannot be everywhere. He has been to Qatar, he has been to India, he has been to the UAE, he has been to Germany and a few other places for, for official visit, you know, talking about investment. But there are a lot more countries that he has not been to and he may not be to. But when there's a policy statement published on the website of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 
an investor will know that when it comes to investment, this is what should be done. But as I talk to you today, it's not exactly clear as to how it should be done. I mentioned uh, sometimes ago some investors that are willing to also come to Nigeria under uh, PPP. But you have to start going to government offices and so on and so forth. And that became a big discouragement, you know, to, to, to some of these persons. Rather, they look at other environment with relatively stable currency, with government who is very hungry for investment. It's not enough for us to say we want this investment by all means. We must demonstrate it with our action that we want investors to come to our country. Absolutely, we must. And you've also mentioned the number of trips Mr. President has had in the past months from France to um, India and UAE. And there's also a long list of other you know, attempts made in that regard. How much of trade and commerce relations have we enacted and garnered from these trips? Is it measurable or you think it's something we will begin to feel in the long term? Well, this is a very short term. In fact, we call this term immediate term. After one year in office, that is when we can be looking at uh, what has all this trip yielded. Recall that President Buhari uh, had a number of trips, you know, to um, China and a few, uh, or I mean, China, I, mean, in, I mean, China, yes, and a few other places where the currency swap. That currency swap started, but unfortunately, we have not really seen the benefit because check where our currency is now, um, over 1,500 plus as we speak. You know, that is what today's rate is. So how can we say those have yielded, uh, um, have yielded the needful gain? I can tell you that, yes, the intention of government for some of these trips, including some policies that have been made, even though some of them are overdose because they are coming at the same time, I must tell you that um, it's important, it's important to, 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 to wait for maybe another few months for the president and his team to be a year in office. After that, we can now evaluate uh, some of these trips if they have yielded the much needed result or not. And I can also tell you, as uh, somebody who also moved around seeking investor into Nigeria especially, mm -hmm. that um, this period of time is short a period of time that you cannot see. Although some of them, we, 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 because we don't work in government, we don't know if there are uh, conversations that is ongoing that have been taken forward by the administration or by those in office. So we will wait because when the results start coming up, we start seeing reports and we can read them and make sense of some of those trips if they are really contributing to trade yeah. or not. But I must tell you that personally, I've not seen some energy coming from trade office. Uh, the Minister of Trade and Investment, I think we need to do more. We have started seeing a combination and you know, economic jabbing the central bank have been releasing in terms of policy. And I can tell you some of them are really welcome some of them, of course, they have their concern because economic decision comes with a lot of trade-off. <clears throat> and the trade-off of those policies, I hope, we are ready for them. Uh, but for trade, I've really not seen any energy. I think that uh, Mr. President's movement, except if the Minister of Trade and Investment is working in silence and the public is not aware of uh, some of the decisions they have taken or okay. some of the moves they are making regarding investment in Nigeria. And it's important for us to know so that if you also have investment we cannot this is a plan a policy of government regarding coming to nigeria to invest this moment today we have to go now if you can in a minute um, talk to us about because you talked about government policy i'm sure you're aware of the expatriate levy you know um, to encourage more involvement of local employment even when these foreigners come in to start businesses but as we speak it already costs companies in nigeria some two thousand dollars to um, a year to obtain residency permit for each of their foreign employee uh, do you think um, this policy in particular uh, uh, matches perfectly the intention of government to woo in more investors? Well, I don't think so. I, I will tell you, I don't think so. I've been resident of uh, another country where I've, where I've lived, and I tell you that such policy does not exactly apply. <clears throat> if you ask uh, foreigners to, to, to come and pay excessively, our currency is relatively weak. And they have to work here, they have to invest here, they have to eat here, they have to live here. So if the burden and barrier to entry is too high, the truth is that they will not come. We need to open our doors, not just for Nigeria to be a dumping ground. We can Indeed. formulate policy. For instance, if you're a foreign company, you must not have less than 80% of locals or 90% of locals. 
you can see brick foreigner because that foreigner may want to start business tomorrow. All right. But when we discourage with high interest, with high fee, honestly, I tell you that our country will not become a, a, a okay. rainbow country. I check most developed countries in the world. Different nationals are there. Indeed. It is not just black or white or brown. Indeed. Everybody is needed on our soil with the investment with them. We've run out of time. Good place to leave you. Chief Economist, SPM Professional, Paul Alaje. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us on the program. Thank you so much.